Hello everybody, welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. Newcastle have just beaten Burnley by two goals to nil, five clean sheets in a row. Hey, football's an easy game when you play it like this, isn't it? This is the last word. Yes, and welcome back to The Last Words, which is proudly sponsored by Green King. There are over 900 Green King pubs, and they'll be showing Newcastle's game against Paris Saint-Germain on Wednesday night. What a game in prospect. And Mbappe versus the Toon at your local Green King pub. Make sure you go to the nearest Green King pub to watch Newcastle versus PSG. If you haven't got a ticket here at St. James's Park, we've got Carl, we've got Lee, we've got Joe. Um, Lee, we'll start with uh, things off. Botman out, Wilson out. Lascelles in, Isaac started as well. Um, what did you make of the team overall? It's a shame, isn't it? They're, they're mounting up. I'm now going to touch upon it, but they seem to be mounting up these injuries. But I was more surprised. Anderson got a start over Joe Litton and Tenali. So we would, none of us wouldn't, wouldn't, yeah, would have said a month ago, Anderson's keeping Tenali out. It's mad how things can change and form can change and Newcastle's trajectory is going up. And, there's players in form who rightly deserve to keep their places and he is one of them but a little bit stressed I'm a tad worried but you know we've got the squad depth in some positions not all of them but it is what it is it is what it is Burnley you know they're very extravagant in how they play very Manchester City like if you if you want to look at it from that side of things in terms of what Vincent Company's trying to do uh, Carl um, and it was Burnley that started the better of the two teams having a big chance early on Dan Burn had made three mistakes really in the first half an hour um, his slip let Burnley come in and get into the side of the box. Cross just towards the penalty spot. It was a good save by the former Burnley man, Nick Pope. Were you worried at all towards the first 10, 15 minutes? I mean, to be honest, I think we spoke about it yesterday on the video, but I said the same thing before Sheffield United game, and it was similar to this one. I always look at Burnley and Sheffield United. They play decent football. They're not, you don't look at them as rollover sides, even though they're newly promoted sides. Um, I thought it was always going to be a difficult game against Burnley. So when those sorts of things occur early on, yeah, of course, you start to get a little bit worried because you think we need to get a foothold in the game. If we do go 1-0 down, how are we going to react? Um, yeah, it was a little, it was nervy to start with, nervy, but um, we overcome it, obviously. We did overcome it and we overcame, overcome it with a fantastic first goal. Me and Joe have done the match reaction, so you've got to watch that. You get an instant reaction on Newcastle's 2-0 win. This is the more detailed one. Anyhow, it's a to um, but it, you'll, you'll see it once I've edited what that means. Fair enough. <laughs> well, but Miggy Almiron, it, you know, we know how good he can be on his day, and when he cuts in on that left foot, it's a fantastic strike, and it has to be something special to beat that uh, young goalkeeper, Trafford. It was a fantastic finish, perfect, almost a perfect response to Burnley's early threat, wasn't it, Joe? It was amazing. The way Miggy took the ball, the way he took any of the opportunities this game, it was absolutely fantastic. The man cut in so well today. It's like the Miggy that was seen last season. He's back in form. Miggy's here. He's doing amazing. He really is. It was a great finish, Carl, wasn't it? it was. It, I think the one thing I would say about Miggy is that I think today was actually his, probably his best game of the season, if I'm honest. He, 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 was, he was running on no end, creating chances, even crossed with his right foot, which is amazing. We were there. I know... 30th of September, Miguel Muron crossed with the right foot and it was actually a half decent cross if someone got on the end of it. Um, what did you make of his overall performance today and do you, do you think he's nailed on for that right-hand side position against uh, Paris Saint-Germain? I thought he was excellent. Um, I, I really, it, that, like you said, it was an unbelievable finish. It was one of those, especially being sat behind it, as soon as it, le it left his boot, you just knew it was curling in. Um, really, really good finish. Obviously, we never doubt Miggy's work rate, and I think the only thing that's ever really been missing from his game is a little bit of end product. And he got the goals last season and hasn't carried on in that, that vein of form. But I, didn't, I, don't, I don't mind the lack of goals from him as long as he can get a bit of end product with regards to the crossing and working on his right foot. And it's obvious that he's been doing that. So I thought he's definitely a contender, for, a cont contender Jesus Christ, can't talk. For uh, man of the match today, I thought I thought he was absolutely fantastic. And see... regards to PSG, yeah, I'd start him on the right. I wouldn't want to see you do like the number of gladiators, the actual game, and the go contender ready. You'd be like, content to enter. enter. Jesus Christ, I can't speak English. I'm from England. Got one slight criticism, Miggy. Do it more often. He's yes. got it in his locker. Do it more often. Yes. None of this one-two. Go for it. How did Alexander Isak miss that chance in the first half, Lee? <laughs> I'd never know. It was like it was like literally. I mean, it was. Very similar to a Man City goal, but the, the right-hand side of it. So, um, I don't know. Maybe just 
because he goes round. It kind of goes round the keeper, doesn't yeah, he? Then it's like excited, to be it's, it's just bouncing all over the place, and it maybe just kind of get it's under control. Sure, yeah. Maybe he's worried about another man next to him, but we don't have to worry about it too much. I don't think Isaac had a great game, to be fair. Like um, he was, he, he looked knackered. He looked scored, absolutely but knackered. that's all strikers care about. It's like I always go back to Van Nistelrooy all the time. Doesn't play well, but grabs a goal. Yeah. What did you make of Alexander Isaac's performance today, Joe? It was a bit hit and miss, but again, like Carl said, or Lee said rather, you know, if you look at the papers first thing in the morning, it'll say Isaac scores and Newcastle win. That's what you want to see, don't you? Isaac's going to put the goal in at the end of the day. Like, like Lee said, regardless of whether he's done an outstanding performance like we seen last season where he would take the ball and he would glue it to his feet, Sometimes Isaac's going to come in and he's just going to sit in his position and he's going to hold the ball at times in, 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 in his place and he's going to pass it on to other players who are going to then make their attack better. We're used to seeing Isak being this amazing, sensational talent and sometimes he's just going to do his job and go out there and put the ball in the back of the net and that, at the end of the day, if it nets with the three points, is that all we need? It is, it is certainly, it's a great point. Newcastle could have actually had another goal just before half-time was cleared off the line, it was great football. Bruno, Bruno, involved, Bruno involved once again, he was outstanding a day. Um, a contender for Man of the Match as well. So yeah, I can say contender. I'm not going to swear. <laughs> not, not yet. It's not past the watershed. Um, but yeah. It is by the time this can <laughs> Yeah, certainly, actually. Yes, you're quite right. But yeah, Newcastle had one clear off the line. Um, Anthony Gordon involved once again. And look, it, he was, again, another player that was a real thorn in Burnley's side today. Um, in terms of the second half, it was, I wouldn't say edgy, but you know, Newcastle had the chances. Trippier having a deflected shot that just whistled past the post. And... I didn't feel like Burnley were really creating too many chances, and if they did, the defence were outstanding once again. The big moment, really, Joe Linton coming on, Lee, and he only lasted two and a half, three minutes, and that's him out probably for a little while now. It looked like a hamstring injury. Easy a month, that is. Easily a month out. Yeah, four to six weeks normally, and that's devastating, really. Especially when Barnes is out as well, because he's his possible option to go on that left-hand side. So, Barnes is out. Get a bugle out! <laughs> But Hodges is out. Google app, you don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> who else is out? Krath has just come back, so I guess that's something. You know, we've got Barnes out, Joe Litton out, Wilson. Hopefully that's not serious, we don't think that is. Botman, they're creeping up a little bit, aren't they? So, but, you know, that's why we went and got the likes of Lewis Hall and Tino Livermento in case injuries were happening across the pitch. You know, squad depth is there, but I'm a tad worried about Joe Litton, like, because he just knew. He just thought, nah, I'm done. Took, took his strap and off, get me off. Tonali came on, I thought he was actually really good when he came on. I think he was almost the perfect substitution, if you like. I wouldn't have been too bothered if Tonali or Joe Litton came on, but I thought Tonali was brilliant. But Carl Anthony Gordon wins the penalty. He's, he's in the form of his life at this moment in time. You know, he was, again, I thought like Bernie just didn't know how to really judge him with this thought, oh, how do we go close to him, do we back off? What do we actually do? And he's been absolutely fantastic so far this season. Stonewall penalty and Alexander Isak picks up the ball and puts it away. And at that point it was like, yeah, we've got the three points. Yeah, definitely. Um, never really doubt Alexander Isak putting that away. Um, um, he's cool as ice, isn't he? Ice running through his veins, runs up, does the double celebration as well to get this, the fans on his side again. Um, but Anthony Gordon, there was a couple of things in the first half that he did. Um, I, I think his footballing brain is really underrated. There was a couple of balls that Nick Pope hit and the way that he arced his run, knowing how, well, anticip anticipating what the defender was going to do to be able to get the ball after the, the defender had gone up for the header. He did that twice. Um, and it's little things like that that I'm watching now. I think this kid is really special, really special. Um, I just, I'm so excited to watch him every week. I really am. I loved, Alex, uh, I loved Alan St. Maximan, but I, Anthony Gordon is... I, gets me off my seat even more than he does, he really it has, does. It has to be in the England squad. It's, I'm not I'm not a massive England fan, but he has to be in the England squad. There's not many better than him, Saka yeah. maybe, apart from that. He's so obvious how much effort he's put in in pre-season. Like, he deserves this, he's done really well. I love Alan Simax, I mean, I'm still, I'm still one of those people that I don't think we should have sold him. No, but I still, I still, that's what I believe, but what Anthony Gordon is, he's Alan St. Maximum with, with goals and assists. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that is what he is. Take away the, the little bits of skill which St. Maxim was un unbelievable at, but that's what that's what the situation is. That's, that's what Anthony Gordon brings. And you look at it now, 40, 45, uh, 45 million pounds. Mm -hmm. Everton, Everton could do with someone like him, couldn't they? Losing 2 1 and home to Luton. Congratulations <laughs> to Luton Town on their first three points in the Premier League. Luton! Nothing more than them to go down. Everton, that is, by the way. Certainly. Um, Joe, just to wrap things up in this first part, um, Jamal Lascelles played another 90 minutes. How do you think he did today? 
honestly, Lascelles is fitting the job well. He's uh, he's coming in, and I'm a person who personally I've said it in the WhatsApp group a lot. Where I'm worried when I don't see Botman on the sheet. Today, when I went in and I seen Lascelles was on the sheet, I was confident. I was happy. I knew he was going to do the job, and he did well. Don't get us wrong; he didn't do anything spectacular. He didn't feed any balls into make an amazing an, an assist. But that man stayed there. He done the the best job he could do at centre back. He done amazing. He ran back. He done everything he needed to do. Cleared the ball when he needed to be. Tackles. There was a tackle in the second half that he came in, and if it wasn't for Lascelles, I was worried Burnley wasn't going to get through. Lascelles done the job. I'm happy about Lascelles. Definitely very happy about Lascelles. Fantastic. Great to see Lascelles getting more games. Especially let's see what how long Sven Botman is out for. A lot of people saying he's out for a month. There's only one man that can really tell you that, and that is Mr. Eddie Howe, the former Burnley man, has just beaten Burnley. Eddie, tell me a little bit more about that. A, a really interesting team. I think Vincent's done a great job. And we knew we had to be really good today because they play a, a very open style, but it's a dangerous style if you're not perfect on your press or whatever your game plan that you're intended to deliver. You have to deliver it well. I thought we did. Uh, probably after the first 10 minutes, we were a little bit slow out of the blocks. Um, I thought we recovered really well and I thought we deserve to win. Yeah, so Callum's got a, a very minor hamstring problem. We hope he'll be back soon. We hope we see him before the international break, but there's no guarantee. Um, and the same with Sven, not that it's a hamstring, but he's got a knee problem. Again, we, I don't think we will see Sven before the international break, but hopefully we'll see him. Uh, very quickly afterwards. Yeah, uh, and I think you had Joe Willock and to, to that list. It's a, it's a difficult moment for us injury-wise, but you know that, it's that kind of season for us with the physical demands that we're going to face. Um, we don't want any injury. Any injury really hurts us, but it is what it is. We have to deal with it. We have to be uh, resilient and deal with the challenges that will come. And we just hope we can get those players back very quickly. And we are back. Um, yeah. So Eddie House has given us all an update on injuries and the fact that Newcastle got another three points, which is fantastic. Um, before touching about the Paris Saint-Germain game in a bit more detail, Carl, we'll get the Premier League table because there's been a few interesting scores today. We've mentioned Everton getting beat, but Manchester United and Manchester City both losing. And Man City lose. Man City lost 2-1 to Wolves today. I'm not surprised about Man United, by the way. They're shit. I'm looking forward to playing them in a couple yeah, of weeks. I I you know what I mean? Good. Honestly, we, we, we owe them one. Um, but Carl, it looks a little bit more healthy now. We're three points off the top four after a difficult run of games. And, you know, we're, we're the form team a little bit now, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, we spoke about it before, didn't we? It's, it's obvious that we had the, uh, the most difficult Premier League start. Um, we had some really, really tough opponents. We threw the Liverpool game away. And we knew that when we were coming to play the likes of Sheffield United and Burnley, obviously we spoke about them potentially being difficult games. That they were the games that we needed to win. Um, the Brentford game was scrash, scrappy, but we got a result and, and uh, we've kicked on from there. So three unbeaten in the Premier League, isn't it now? Um, on the balance. And I think West Ham away next. West Ham away next Sunday, Lee will be there for us. Difficult game, but I think... I think we can go and get a result again, especially because, like you say, we're in form um, and back to where we should be, based on last year, because we're not entitled, are we? No, no, certainly <laughs> not entitled. Um, Joe, are we in a title race? Six points before Liverpool take on Spurs? Yeah. Maximum of seven points. Are we in a title race, or do we got to just take it one game at a time, as Mr. Eddie Howe would say? <laughs> are we in a title race? <laughs> you tell us. No, um, on a serious one, I don't know. I, I, I would say a title race, a top four race. Why I? Why not? Why not a top four race? And I don't mind that at all. Um, are, we in a, are we in a race for trophies? Yes. Seriously. Seriously. Yes. We are in a race for trophies and we are in a race for glory this season. So whether that's a top, whether that's finishing second, third, fourth, fifth, that's happy for us. I'm happy with that. Title race, I'll let you decide. Maybe. Maybe after City losing, is that, is, that, is that you sitting on the fence here? That's that's me, like dancing on the fence. Yeah, definitely dancing on the fence. If if I want to do, if I want to do, I would run down there and tell everyone that I'm in a title race and we're ready to run with it and we're ready to go for it. After City losing, that's blown my mind. I'm, I'm happy to say we're in a top four race. I would say that. Yes. So he's dancing on the fence. You're not on the fence. No. Yeah, we're in a top. I said that like when we did the, the Premier League stuff. Obviously, people thought I was bantering, but no, I think I'm, we're we're exceeding our expectations much earlier than people expected. I think we can be in a title race, definitely, definitely. Lee, 
Um, if Botman is out for a considerable amount of time, do we have enough to contend with Premier League, Champions League, Carabao Cup? Got the option. You can move Dan Byrne across, can't you? And play Hall or target left back, there's another option. But it's asking a lot for Fabian Shea at his age now to play every single game because I think he's first choice at the minute with Botman being injured. So that could be a strain and all it takes is one muscle injury or something and that's them ruled out. But only, only silver lining after these few games is then we've got the international break. So it could speed up Botman, fingers crossed. Or whoever, whoever goes down with niggles or whatever, give them time to nurse. It's a hectic schedule, but you know what? We shouldn't be complaining about it. This is what we wanted. We've got really, as Carl said, the most difficult start in the Premier League. We've got the most difficult Champions League draw. We've got the most difficult League Cup draw. May as well give us the most difficult FA Cup draw. And that comes around in January. But Cambridge, Cambridge at home? Probably put Woods again. But look, we shouldn't be complaining. This is what we want. It's game after game every three days. It's something to look forward to. We were talking before, but just off camera, weren't we? Before the match, it was like, bloody hell. Can it recover? Yeah, it's another game. It's another game. It's another game. But... Um, yeah, it's stretching, but it'll give the, the lads an opportunity to impress, and it's a, it's a chance to grab that. Certainly. Um, just a small matter of Paris Saint-Germain at home, and Batbay and Co are coming to tune. Um, incredible, just, just that sentence here, <laughs> to just even say it out loud. But um, the first home game in the Champions League, of course, me, Lee, and your brother. Get well soon, Chris. Um, <laughs> Um, so Newcastle draw nil nil with AC Milan. Uh, now Chris is absolutely fine. He just couldn't find his ball. Like he's on live support. <laughs> he, uh, on, your your words, not mine. Yeah, he could, your he's words, fine. not mine. He couldn't find his bollocks this yeah, morning. He needs to grow up. Yeah, <laughs> he couldn't find his bollocks this morning. Um, no, in all seriousness, get well soon, Chris. Um, yeah, yeah Paris, Chris. <laughs> Paris Saint Germain on Wednesday, Joe. Paris Saint Germain. Can Newcastle beat Paris Saint Germain? Oui, oui. I honestly, like for real, I think if we go in there and we show the confidence that we have the last three or four games, we can certainly go in there and show a threat. At the end of the day, we have beat the best team in the world, Manchester City here. Disagree with us if you want to, but Manchester City are hands down the best team in the world right now. If we can beat them, why can't we be Paris Saint-Germain? Why not? Why not? Atmosphere is going to be incredible, and you're going to have one of the best seats in the house front row. You're going to see Mbappe pretty close up. Um, is it just stopping Mbappe? Is that is that the big thing, or is it just is there more of that with PSG? I think there's going to be a little bit more. Um, you know, the likes of Hakimi, for example. But for, I, I agree with Joe wholeheartedly, and I think I honestly think the difference will be the fans. I really do. Um, because we're going to be so electric, the atmosphere is going to be so electric. The players are going to be up for it, and as long as the players can harness that and not get too riddled with the occasion like we did at Wembley for example I think we can beat them I really do Lee these are the games that you've been looking forward to you know we've been to trying to get us emotional maybe <laughs> but no but no seriousness we've, we've done you know your League Cup games on a Tuesday night but actually it's the big boys it's the big boys coming to town and it's the first one it's He's getting, he's getting, he's getting famous now he's got, he's got, he's got, he's got, he's got it's war, war Shazza there you know what I mean Shazza uh, Shazza <laughs> Shazza, Shazza loves the tune, there you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are the games that you probably look forward to more than anybody. It is, it's, and also the fans as well, because not many of them have got out of Milan. So it'll be the first time in probably a lot of them for the lifetime that they've seen a Champions League game in person. So um, it'll be my first home league game in Champions League because I watched them all as, on, a, on the TV as a kid when the Bobby. So looking forward to that. Um, get, get in early, you know, soak up the atmosphere. That's what they've been saying with the billboards around uh, inside the ground, electronic ones as well. Um, bring it on, you know, that right-hand side, Hakimi, and then you've got Dembele, <laughs> uh, Skrelly at the back, and, you know, Marquinhos. I think it's a midfield, centre midfield for me. That's where I think we can win the battle. If we win that battle, um, I don't think it's too much of, look, I'm not saying don't worry about Mbappe, but it's more their right-hand side that we need to watch out for. But bring it on, you know, this is what we're in for. And, why can't we get a result? Why not? Even, even a draw? Even a draw? Why not? Look, Dan Byrne has proved us wrong at every opportunity. Everyone we look at who's a pacey winger long legs and we think, oh, he's going to have a difficult oh. game. He's handled them. And again today, right wing, who was playing on the right for Burnley first half? Uh, Johnny giving him, Burnley better than everyone giving else. him a little bit of jip to begin with, but Dan Byrne just figured him out after 10, 15 minutes and dealt with him. To, and to he's be far honest, quicker to, than to Dan be honest Byrne. Me, I don't know half the Burnley players. <laughs> no, no. 
It's true. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not your Sean Dyche burning he's, anymore. He's it's, not not getting, your, it's not your 4-4-2. But but he's not getting burnt for pace. His, his position is very good. No pun, no, no, pun, no pun intended. Uh, yeah, and the likes of Fabian Scher to cover him as well. So it's, um, I'm actually interested to see how well it, I think he'll do well. Yeah, be absolutely enthralling, exciting. Anything you want it to be, any adjective you want, that's what it will be on Wednesday night. Get, make sure you get into the seats early if you go into the game and you're, and you're fortunate enough to get a ticket because you're going to hear the Champions League music and it's amazing. Believe. You're gonna, it's a little bit better than that, but yeah, honestly, a little, a little bit better than that. But um, yeah, make sure you get to your seats early for Newcastle versus the Paris Saint-Germain. But Newcastle have beaten Burnley today by two goals to nil. They stay in the top half, the three points off the Champions League. And Mickey Almi wrong use his right foot. Get in. Like and subscribe Thank to Newcastle fans. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Come on, the tune! <laughs> like and subscribe to Newcastle fans TV. We'll see you all very soon.